Give it one second. We're going to bring everybody into the Hangout here. Cool. All right. Well, hi, everybody. My name is Fraser Kane, and this is going to be a live Google Plus Hangout to talk about uh, H Plus, the digital series, right here on, uh, on Google Plus. Uh, so we've gathered together a bunch of the, uh, the, uh, the creators and production people and the director of, uh, of H Plus to, uh, to, answer, uh, to answer my questions, to, uh, to talk about the work, talk about the show, and also to answer your questions about the show. So this is going to take about an hour or so, and uh, over the course of this hour, um, we'll be talking, they'll be talking about the show, but you'll have a chance to be able to uh, contribute your questions as well. Now, you're probably watching this on a bunch of different places all at the same time, so uh, sort of the places that you can you can ask your questions, you can start queuing them up now if you want. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can post your comments and questions just in the YouTube chat, and we'll be able to uh, to catch those questions there. Uh, if you're watching this over on Google Plus on the event page, you can uh, post your questions there. Uh, if you're watching this just on Google Plus in the uh, H Plus stream, you can post a question there. And if you're watching this embedded somewhere else out on the uh, on the internet, you can uh, you can post your question on um, using the hashtag H Plus uh, H Plus Hangout. So cool. Well, I'm going to introduce everybody who's with us today. So first, I and mean, this is just in no particular order, just the way I'm seeing them on the film strip. So we've got uh, Cosimo Di Tommaso, one of the writers of H Plus. Hey, Cosimo. Hello. Is that working? Awesome. Uh, we had we had John uh, Cabrera, but it uh, looks like he's disappeared. He'll be back in a second. The other writer. Uh, we've got uh, Jason Taylor and uh, Brian Singer. Hello. I just How's walked in it? and this was happening, so I sat down. <laughs> <laughs> you're just you're just uh, photobombing people's uh, hangouts. I'm literally just passing through. <laughs> How's everybody? Cool. Cool. From Bad Hat Harry. That's awesome. And we've got uh, Stuart Handler, who is the uh, is the director. Hey, Stuart. Hello. How's it going? <laughs> good. So, so this is good. Well, I had a whole bunch of really tough questions for John, but now he's clearly uh, disappeared. So I get to throw all these questions at Cosimo instead. And I think, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I've been, you know, I've been on a big bender watching the last couple episodes uh, today. And I think I'd be interested to sort of hear the story of how uh, such a kind of interesting, not you know sort of episodic, YouTube-based show came to be. You know, how long has this been in production for? Um, John and I came with, with the, the idea um, first in uh, 2006, so it was a while ago. And uh, um, we were, John and I have been friends for a while, and we had kind of had the same interests in, like, movies and... Uh, books and television and comics and so um, once we were just you know we, we had learned about microchips starting to be implanted in the human body and so we just started kind of like imagining stories and, and, and brainstorming about what would happen if we had microchip implanted and that's how it all it all kind of started basically and I guess how did uh, did the folks at Bad Hat Harry get involved? I mean, you know, that's sort of, I guess, and we, I know, Brian, we've only got you for about 10 minutes or so, so how did that sort of fall into your wheelhouse? Uh, oh, let's welcome John first, since oh, sorry, John, right. kind of saw him. No problem. There's John Carrera. He's the, uh, the other uh, writer of the team, so, and creator. Uh, it was, it was originally brought to us as a television show concept, and then, uh, and then we talked it out, and, and it was and, and Jason, the team here, we all kind of felt that it was a real natural for uh, for the internet space. You know, there there hadn't been at this time a lot of uh, really elegant material for the internet. Most of it was uh, short comedy webisodes, things like that. And this was a chance to do something really epic, uh, technology based, and um, and ultimately uh, a, a real great format for the for you know, for 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 the small uh, episode, you know, episode structure, uh, particularly in the the timeline structure, the fact that you begin with this event and then you go before it and after it, before it and after it, it made it kind of addictive, uh, much like an old uh, an old serial. That's cool. 
Um, and it feels like you know the medium because the medium is on is on YouTube. You've got a certain amount of of freedom, and it's almost like you no longer have a lot of those constraints. And so uh, you know you can kind of do anything, and that might sometimes get pretty complicated. And you know to test the waters and stuff. So did you find that you know that some of the ideas that just made a lot more sense over on this medium than you know traditional television show or or movie? I don't know how you guys more answer. Yeah, John. Well, actually, I want to throw it to John because he's John, back. Yeah, John, you just John reappeared. Well, you know, I mean, when we uh, when we first started the process, we weren't really thinking of it in any particular medium. I, um, Cosmo and I, we just sort of started from you know, from the perspective of of, of two people developing uh, a concept into into th this sort of story world, um, and we spent uh, many months actually uh, just mapping out uh, the timeline, um, the characters, starting from this, you know, this, this first idea of this event happening and, and sort of taking that um, and, and uh, kind of imagining what people all around the world would be experiencing, um, how they would be, uh, you know, handling an event like this. And little by little, over the course of, I'd say, about six months, would you say, Cosimo? I, I think, yeah, yeah we... we about six months before we had something that we just wanted to share with people. And at that point, we didn't even really know exactly what it was. We, we took it to, um, to Brian and, and, uh, and his, his guys there and shared it with them, um, you know, to see what they thought of it. Uh, and, and I think it was pretty clear quickly that what we had here was something that could live in, in, the, uh, in the online space uh, in a really cool way. And so, how much content have you guys done so far, and how much is still is still coming as as part of this season? Well, so far, we, so far we have, uh, as of today, we released, uh, I believe, 30, 33 30, episodes. Thirty three episodes. 33 yeah, thirty three. As today. Yeah, as of today, thirty three. And uh, this first chapter season, whatever you want to call it, um, is uh, is forty eight episodes. So in total, about three and a half hours worth of content. Right, right. Um, and then how do you, uh, and, but you said like there's a lot of additional content as well, right? There's all of this, these annotations, there's all of these, yes. you know, other, and, and many, almost like a one-to-one -one parody of, of the stuff that's in the show to all the other stuff that you guys have been making as well. So, I mean, how does that play into the, the entire structure of it? Um, well, I, uh, I, you know, we've all, we always imagined that the series wouldn't behave like a, you know, a traditional television series and for that reason we wanted this to have a really sort of epic scope not just the story itself which obviously you know takes place all around the world but the actual experience itself would be really far reaching and and since the beginning we had this this image of creating a sort of alternate reality as part of the uh, the experience itself so we have every episode of, of the uh, of the series has um, one piece of extra content that we release. Sometimes it's a, a video, sometimes it's a, an article, a journal entry from one of the characters. Now, most of it intending to sort of live in the world of these characters. And because the series itself has so, it's so nonlinear and, and, and so much of it's told with these sort of gaps of time in between, a lot of this extra content serves to sort of help fill in some of that, uh, some of the, those, those gaps in time. Yeah, we we want we've always wanted to to do a very active show, and so we wanted the viewer to be able to actually be part of the show and be able to you know try to put themselves to 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 piece you know the piece of the puzzle together and be a very act active component of the show itself. Yeah, I mean you know the series is about a global community, sort of working together to figure things out. We thought that it would be really fun if the experience of watching the show could in some way mirror that, right? So we have a lot of language in this series, right? Um, and a lot of it is subtitled, but some of it isn't subtitled, and purposefully so, right? So that we could help encourage people coming together from a variety of cultures to help sort of piece some of these clues together, which is, you know, really what the characters in the actual story are doing. Yeah, that's like the biggest difference between uh, internet and TV is when you're releasing a television show, 
you've, um, you know, it, it makes its way through the international community. When you're releasing an internet series, it's global, instantaneous. Everywhere in the world, they get this. And part of what was so exciting about um, the script and the execution was that it, it just feels really international. It takes place all over the world, and it's got an international cast. So it made, it was another reason it made it great for this format. Yeah. Yeah, and so one of the things, you know, in watching H Plus from, from my perspective, I really felt like, unlike a lot of shows which try to kind of dumb down some of the technology conversations, some of the sociopolitical type stuff, with this show it really kind of assumes a certain amount of intelligence and working knowledge of these, this kind of stuff right from, from day one. You definitely feel like you have to pay attention to kind of keep track of everything that's going on. You know, was that a real conscious decision to kind of, I don't know, challenge the viewers a little bit more than a lot of other, you know, shows people might be watching? Stuart? Yeah, I would say, I, I would say that we all sort of share the belief that the audience is a lot smarter than most uh, forms of television and movies tend to give them credit for. Um, and that the exciting thing about a web series is that in this sort of negative space between episodes airing, people have time or we hope that people would sort of take the interest in investigating this world a bit farther and, and bringing themselves up to speed in terms of what's out there and what's real. Um, so we absolutely wanted people to be sort of like um, sucked into it and to, to make the assumption that they're going to be, you know, just as, just as quick to learn all this stuff. Uh, as us, so we don't I mean, need to do a whole lot of sort of exposition there. It's interesting because we had we had discussions about this on set during the post production process. You know about whether or not certain pieces of information we wanted to just sort of hand to the audience, or whether we wanted to hide it a bit. And um, and usually it came down to that. It came down to you know what I, I we trust that, that that our audience is smart enough to to uh, to find it. You know, and that we don't really need to sort of spoon feed. Um, some of that information to them. Um, also, I'd like to talk a bit about the production quality of the of the show as well, because once again, when you first watch this right from from day one, the quality of the graphics and the quality of the lighting and the camera work and all that is really really high. Like, I don't think I've ever seen anything that's gone straight to YouTube that's had that level of of quality. So, you know, was it was it hard to to do that, or was it almost like easier for you with your production background to be able to, to create a show of that level of quality for for the internet? I think when we first started creating the show, it was really about making the show for any medium. It was it was really about you know that it wasn't just an online show; it was a show, and we treated it as best we could to deliver the best production value with the epic and and, it, and our production team down in Santiago. It it, it really came down to just wanting to make the best product, not considering where it was going to eventually end up. Yeah, I'd also seen some short subject stuff that Stuart had done that I, I just was really, that, that I knew was done on a shoestring budget and with very little time. And, and it's less about money and more about time to shoot something that dictates the quality very often. And the stuff that he, he showed in these, in, in what I saw, and I, I knew the limitations. I said, okay, well, this is about one of the few guys who's going to be able to, execute the massive content we're talking about um, for the price you know, of, of an internet series. So, so that, that's kind of, you know, a lot of it went there. And, and, uh, and also, uh, you know, now with digital cameras, with, with the right taste, you know, a person can make stuff look really, really beautiful, where with film you couldn't do that. It was just too expensive. Well, I mean, there's like an attention to detail as well that I, that you see. Like, um, one of the things that I notice is that you know, there's a whole gesture um, system that's actually been been fully worked out. I mean, to what extent have you guys thought through how all of that would would work? Well, we spent a lot of time very early on knowing that that the audience would sort of try to reverse engineer whatever we put on screen. Um, so there was a period where we were all meeting sort of once a week trying to design this UI in advance of the story, at least coming up with sort of a basic set of actions and commands so that we could give people, you know, mo like repeatable motions that you'd start to see and, and clock throughout the series. Um, so yeah, we, we built it from scratch, and it, I guess, has the, the fundamentals of being semi-functional, at least in our heads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and there's other stuff too, right? I mean, there's like a lot of it. Obviously, still looks very, you know, 
modern day, but then there's like these really cool like clear laptops and you know different interfaces on phones. So it's like those touches that say, okay, someone's thinking about what this technology is going to look like in a couple of years, and at the same time, you know, it's also kind of the same. So yeah, so it's it's really interesting, uh, you know, how we. The, sort of tackling what elements of the world itself would, um, what elements of the world would be sort of futuristic, you know, for lack of a better world, at word, and what elements would still be the same. I mean, you know, we've got uh, essentially like brain computer interfaces in a world where at least as of, as of now, does not seem to have self-driving cars, as, as many of the fans have, have pointed out, you know? So I think that this, this was a big part of our, our discussion early on in, in regards to how we, would, um, how we would sort of approach the world and approach the budget that we had to sort of create that world. And, and we, we, I think with, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, Stuart, I think that, the, you know, the, the idea was to sort of create a world that was very relatable, um, uh, while also sort of, t you know, having these these touches uh, of, a, of a future that we feel is coming. Yeah, while racing the reality of everything actually happening far faster than we could have possibly expected it to. Right. Yeah, I always think about that. Like, like, what, 2005, we had iPhones, and, you know, now we have iPads, and my children are already bored of iPads, and, you know, it's all just going faster and faster. So, um uh, so I want to talk a bit, a couple of things. One is the uh, the actual the language is involved. I mean, there's a lot of you know relying on subtitles and you know and and sort of using these international locations. I, I'd love to know how many of them you actually filmed in. But uh, but what is the sort of what was the decision making process for that? Was it tough to kind of develop such a you know going for so much subtitles in other languages and stuff? I mean, it gives that real international flavor, right? Cosmo, you should take this because yeah. I mean, yeah. it's a big uh, international. Right, he's our international. Yeah, I, I th <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we really wanted to stay true to the story, and uh, um, I think the uh, in in general, like the American audience is kind of used to subtitles, and not you know, like a lot of movies uh, from from like foreign movies are seen are watched with subtitles. You know, it's a little more difficult out of the States because people are not to use. But basically we really wanted to keep uh, the truth of the story. So if we had an Italian priest living in Italy in Nassau in the south of Italy, we wanted we wanted him to speak in Italy, basically. What in Italian why I think it would have been really weird to hear him in in, in American. So but I mean, this was these were some of the discussions that we had early on because I mean, it's yeah. true that you have you there is a certain obstacle. You know, when a large percentage of your audience is English speaking, you there, there is an obstacle with subtitles to a degree, right? So there was some discussion about how we would be able to do subtitles and bring other languages into the project. Um, you know, while also keeping enough of the story English speaking for you know, for, for people who frankly are, don't, you know, don't want the series to be 100% subtitles. And so, you know, a, a part of that was using English as this sort of international language. You know, we've got characters who speak different languages and when they come together, they end up speaking English together. Um, and, uh, and then of course, you know, the other thing which I, I sort of uh, touched upon before is this idea that some of our, some of our foreign language stuff, we didn't subtitle at all. You know, it's just, it is just yeah. it is what it is. I've noticed that a couple of times. I'm like, why didn't you subtitle that? Oh, great, I'm going to have to go and look this up, right? Exactly. But, you know, like, if I want it, I'm going to have to go and dig it up. And I think that's back to that, you know, playing to the intelligence. You know, you can, in some cases, you can have enough to tell the story, but also you might have to do a little work if you want to get the most out of the story. And I, I think that's where, again, we hop back to why it lives so great on the Internet where people can go back and rewatch things over and over and, and really kind of immerse themselves in these other languages, you know, and, and, you know, take it from that viewpoint of each character. So it was, it was kind of great. And the support that we got in order to do something uh, so radical, you know, some of the episodes are completely in Italian or, or Finnish. And, you know, it was kind of great to have that support to do something that really hadn't been done before. 
So I got a couple of questions that have come in from YouTube because remember this is live so if you want to ask a question feel free you can ask a question on YouTube or if you're watching this on Google Plus you can post into the the comments of the event page or on anywhere on Google Plus or if you're watching this uh, somewhere else embedded on the web you can use the hashtag uh, H plus hangout and we'll catch it there as well. So um, this comes from, uh, actually this is a great question, this comes from Jose Double Jr. Does anyone have any ideas to how to use this in, in the classroom? And I guess the question is, you know, some of the language issues, some of the technology issues, talking about the future a bit. Have you thought about, you know, how this might actually serve as an educational resource for people? Uh, I mean, not, no, I haven't. I mean, Just I, want to entertain know, them? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I think first and foremost, we were looking to create something that was fun to watch. I, I know that, yeah. I know that, you know, there are a lot of people who are watching the series who absolutely love the subject of transhumanism and love technology and, um, and, and there are certainly many opportunities in the series to, you know, to educate on some of that that upcoming technology te technology which you know a lot of it is in its infancy today there's some of it that exists that you know was a part of the research that we did um, in, in creating the series but you know really what we wanted to create ultimately is a story about people right and um, and, and something that would be uh, for lack of a better word just fun you know I mean you could probably add if you were doing like a a film series of, of subject of, on the subject of transhumanism because there's all different kinds of films that that, that have explored it in the past and and, and so you, if you wanted to you know create some kind of retrospective of the you know the the evolution of when technology and humans have been you know merged since since Metropolis since early cinema yeah it's, it's kind of a it'd be a piece in a chapter of that perhaps in my film one of my more esoteric film school classes. <laughs> um, uh, so JJD fifty four fifty four forty uh, asks: um, uh, Is there a non fictional inspiration for God's Hand, or is it completely fictional? And so this is this this plot uh, point that was revealed just in the last couple of episodes that there is a archive of all human technology called God's Hand. You know, where did the idea of this come from? I always think of you know, I was thinking like that's from like Foundation. You know, the, yeah. Well, so, you got to rem you got to remember you got you got to remember who a big part of this series is perspective, right? It's it's a theme that we've talked about since the beginning. It's it's you know it's why we you know we chose to start every episode from the point of view of one of the characters. This is very much a story about how everyone sees this world, right? So we have characters who are devoutly religious and characters who find it you know religion nonsense. We have characters who are you know who want to dismantle science and other characters who, you know, believe that it's our salvation. Mm -hmm. And that's really ultimately, I think, oh, what is that? Um, did you guys hear that? Or no, was that, that was just me. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, okay, so, uh, uh, and, and, um, and so you gotta all, so you, I think you all, the audience always has to sort of think about who is the person who is talking about these these things? And and this God's hand has just been revealed, you know, uh, the new plot piece that it's been revealed by a character in the series who we know is extremely extremely vehemently against science, progress, technology. But he's also, as we've also just revealed in this episode, sort of a. a um, a dichotomy in himself, right? He he's a hypocrite to in in the fact that he himself is reliant on technology, and uh, and we have to imagine, to a degree, must hate himself because of it. So I think that um, certainly God God's hand is going to be, you know, playing a more important role in the series as it progresses. But we got to remember, sort of who who is. Who are the people who are who are talking about these these these, uh, these things and, and sort of put it into that perspective? Uh, so I guess we got a question. Um, oh, there's some there's some good comments on YouTube. Um, so uh, this is just I guess just a comment from Mike Trio, just sort of mirroring what we're saying that it was great to see you guys cover this from a world perspective, and I think this is sort of one of those narratives that are that's going on right is that all this technology it's all happening now kind of worldwide at the same time and the implications of this virus are worldwide at the at the same time so 
Um, you know, what kind of what kind of thinking did that sort of net global audience and also global um, you know technology implications play into your into your writing? Uh, I mean, huge, right? I mean, for, I I think that probably Cosimo's. Um, you know, working with a working with a writing partner like Cosimo, who sort of because I mean, my my experience is an American experience, right? I, I don't I I don't have that international um, background. Um, so I think that you know a big part of our writing process really was me sort of you know th sort of seeing the world through Cosimo's eyes uh, a, a lot yeah. of the time, and and uh, and. I think that that was uh, that was something that we that we um, was sort of an adventure that we kind of went on. I, I feel like in in many ways I feel like I've gone through this sort of international adventure with all of these characters um, uh, for the first time. Uh, you know, in you know when yeah. we were actually doing this, like I, I feel like I was sort of experiencing a global thing because uh, so many writers really do write from this American perspective of other cultures and uh, and it was really refreshing to have this this new kind of uh, view of the world yeah but but basically it's because um, I'm sorry John if I just no, 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 the no end, but uh, you know it is a, a story you know it's, it's about something that happens um, you know it's it, it's worldwide it's like you were saying before like now every a, a technological innovation, you know, it spreads right away worldwide. So we thought, you know, for H plus, it would happen the same. And of course, like if it's a story that happens everywhere in the world, then we want to see it from different point of views of characters around the world. Um, yeah, and so and with the oh, thank, thank you so thank, much. Thank you very much for showing Bye, up. It was an honor. Thanks. See you soon. <laughs> All right. See you, Brian. Um, so I guess the, you know, related to the international, you know, from the production standpoint, where did you guys do all the filming? Was it uh, in Southern California or was it uh, everywhere? Uh, <laughs> should I take this one or? Yeah, you yeah. go for it. Um, you know, we uh, we did look at several places that we could shoot uh, and ended up shooting everything that you see in Santiago, Chile outside of the uh, first couple minutes of episode one which were uh, shot after. Um, you know, it, it really was a place that could replicate uh, everywhere in the world. You know, it had your, your sweeping landscapes, it had your cityscapes, it had your, your deserts and, and really kind of doubled for um, everywhere. You know, it, it had a climate that was similar to, to Southern California and, and allowed us to really display a world that hadn't been seen. You know, it wasn't like, oh, I, I've seen stuff shot there, and and really helped to define this world in a way that that we couldn't have anywhere. You know, we, we drove outside of Santiago a few a few times. Um, you know, to some coastal cities, and and the the rock climbing obviously wasn't in the city. So you know, it it, it kind of lent itself to a place where we could recreate. How many different countries? Thir Thirteen different countries, John. Uh, I think it's 13 different geographic locations yeah. is what is, I, I think that's what I counted. But, um, but yeah, I mean, everything from, you know, uh, Alaskan tundra to, uh, you know, to, to the African savanna. Um, yeah, we and did. How, was, we did it, it how was it, like, how was it working there? I mean, was it a pretty, oh, was it was a pretty amazing. cool place to visit? Yeah. I, I think, I think we can all unilaterally agree it was a wonderful experience. Uh, they had a great crew that really was just excited to work on something that that truly is epic for for what it was. You know, it, it kind of everyone came together to to you know get us everywhere we needed to go and and kind of a crazy production schedule, um, but uh, but really worked out and and you know never had a problem. So so you I mean, many people don't realize, but I mean you did this all in one. You know, you did almost like a normal production schedule, right? You you filmed oh, yeah. the whole yeah. thing in one yeah. place, one time. And yeah, normal. Then... The, the the normality would not be twenty nine days, which is what we did it in. But <laughs> um, you know, everything was shot in twenty nine days. But it was it was shot back to back, uh, five six day weeks. Wow. Um, yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty crazy. Uh, did you, you know, learn a bunch of powerful lessons about uh, about doing that, you know, in that location and with that sort of a schedule? 
<laughs> <laughs> I think the general laughter. I think you know. I, I don't. I wouldn't say it were lessons. I think you know. We we all learned from our experience, and and it was just great to have a team. You know, uh, that that really pitched in to to make it happen. I, I think Stuart can talk the most to you know running around with crews at, at sunset in order to to get the final shots. Um, but it, it really was uh, kind of a dream situation. Yeah, I think a lot of this production happened because we were all a bit too naive to understand that we shouldn't be yeah. able to pull off what we were trying to pull off. Right. And if we set out to do it again, we probably would have no idea how to actually accomplish it. Um, it, it was such a cool crew and such an amazing sort of um, on-set vibe. We, we had this sort of guerrilla meets Warner Brothers bizarre paradox in terms of um, the sort of different styles of making, uh, you know, something for people to watch. And I, I think we all sort of say in a loving way that we felt like the biggest student film shoot of all time on certain days. And on other days, it felt like sort of every other movie. Um, and somehow all those things kind of came together and it made it work we yeah, hope yeah it was like actors carrying lights you know like you know all of the all of the cliches that you hear from these you know everybody coming together to make a movie you know yeah and everyone uh, being really understanding with none of the the conveniences of uh of some of the modern film crews uh you know trailers and, and such the actors really right. did kind of all come together to be part of the team uh and 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 dealt with uh our situations especially the parking garage uh, being wet and hot and, uh, you know, muddy and dirty. Yeah, it, it, was not, uh, it was not easy, and they really hung in there to, to give us what you see on screen. Uh, so this is a great question. It comes from Matthew Stevens on YouTube. Most of the drama and sci-fi web series out there are independently produced, but this one actually has the support from Warner Brothers. Do you think that's a trend that will continue with the big studios? And I think that's... You know, it's a great question, right? That that all the stuff we see on YouTube is is fairly low production quality, completely independent. As you said, you know, it's it's the actor, writer, directors carrying the lights around. Uh, but this is great that there's support from Warner Brothers. So, do you see this moving forward? You know, has there been more interest out there? Yeah, well, Warner Brothers has a, a digital arm. That's you know, that's sort of their their initiative. And and this wasn't the first project that Warner Brothers. Um, uh, did of this premium quality. They, they had another uh, series called Aim High that actually uh, came out before. It's not a sci-fi series, but um, also Mortal Kombat uh, was a huge hit for Warner Brothers. And, and, uh, and they have, I know, uh, other projects in, uh, on their slate as well. Uh, you're going to start to see more of this. You know, as more, as more uh, ad dollars start coming onto the internet, right, like we're, it, it's going to become easier to uh, to make this level of, of production, this, this, this quality of production for, for a, a price. And right now, I'd say we're still in the experimental phase, right? We're st we still have studios that are doing it because they want to learn, because they want to understand how to create content in this space. And we are learning, you know, um, with every, every episode that comes out, we're reading the comments, we're, we're taking as much, uh, um, you know, as much of this away as we can um, for, you know, uh, hopefully another season of H plus. And I know Warner brothers for all of the other properties that they, that they're, uh, that they're planning to develop. Uh, now I'm a fan of, you know, mystery based, you know, shows like this, uh, you know, lost things like that, where the, you know, where the story is revealing parts of the story over time. And it's a bit of a mystery. You're trying to figure it out. And especially if there's lots of information out there on the internet that you can try and swap stories, but you know, how much of that, you know, but what I don't like is when it, you know, it all gets unfulfilled and you don't get some of the answers to the questions that you have. So are you, how are you balancing that? Do you like taking any notes from seeing other people go before you? <laughs> well, we would be, I, you know, I think we would be disingenuous if we didn't admit that we, that a lot of us are, we're big fans of Lost and we really love the storytelling style. And in particular, in particular, what I loved about Lost was less the show itself and more the communities that formed because of the show, yeah. um, you know, and the, the dialogue and the discussion and, and figuring it out. Um, you know, I was disappointed with the end of Lost. Certainly. Um, I look back at my experience watching that show over the course of those many seasons, and, and it was a fulfilling experience. Um, but because of my disappointment, um, you know, obviously I'm, I'm thinking about that as it applies to this show, because this show has a lot of similarities in that we are 
posing a lot of questions. But one thing that I can say for sure is that we have a very dense timeline of events with a lot of all of this stuff already figured out. How much of it we could fit into this series really was, you know, a question of budget, uh, a question of time, of, you know, what we were able to show. And some of it was wanting to hold off some of the bigger, the bigger answers to these things. So we, we feel like we have what, we, what we've created, this, this sort of story world that we've created, that we're unfolding um, in this series, we feel like it will, that we'll be able to, uh, to conclude uh, the series um, in, in a way that's fulfilling. Uh, we hope that we, that we do. Well, you know, you don't need to spoil any sort of future plot things because, as I said, uh -huh. you know, we're in the early 30s here. But, like, as long as you have answers for some of these things, then that's all I really need to know. Like, like what are those little chips in their wrists? Do you know what those are about? Yes. Okay, Absolutely. good. Yes. Absolutely. Right. You'll, and, you'll, and, and, and I think the audiences will, will, by the end of this series, they will know what that is. And, they will, okay. and, and I think that it will become clearer. Uh, it will start to become clearer. I think that it's already becoming clearer to audiences. Um, yeah. That there is that there is a difference between the the wrist implants and the H plus neck implants, implants yeah. right? Like the the you know one is clearly surgically implanted and the other one is injected, right? So we know that there's a big difference there, and what we're, I think we're going to start to learn more of their differences soon. And and I you know I think that you know we're already seeing uh, you know people who you know fans of the show who are discussing the the, the series at Google Plus, which I think is probably right now serving as really the best place for for. Uh, for discussion about the series, um, we're seeing people already figure some of this stuff out. Um, um, okay, good. And then also, I you know, do we know who? Uh, do you know who caused the uh, the virus? Yes, we do. Okay. Okay, good. <laughs> I, I just want to add one little thing, which is, um, you know, even though it looks like there are a lot, there are actually a lot of mysteries, though. Uh, we do have the answers. A lot of the answers are already in, in the episodes themselves and in the extra content that we put on the website. So um, I, I think a, a lot of them, people have already figured out or they will soon. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So as long as as long as that people can know that they're gonna they're gonna be able to watch this and they're gonna get a bunch of their answers, you know, for yeah, their I mean, questions and, I, and not, not have lie. to kind of you know shake their fists at you at the end of episode forty eight. I'm not and, gonna lie. Yeah, there are there no. there are going to be questions that are left unanswered at the end of this. I mean, we, at yeah. the end of this first chapter for sure, because we always imagined that there were, were going to be more chapters and and. Uh, and, and we wanted to leave some of that. And, and like I said, we created something very big, very dense. And then when we actually put pen to page and had to look at how much of what we had created, how much of this story world that we created could we actually fit into the script, um, we couldn't fit at all. Uh, and so we're, you know, some of this ancillary content is serving to fill in some of that content now, some of those answers now, uh, some of which we plan to expand upon in, in a future chapter. Um, and some of it's just not going to be there this this season. But, um, but this season. I, I think that, yeah. Well, so I say more season. I say season. I mean, I say season. You could call it chapter, season, whatever. Uh, um, but uh, but yeah. I mean, you know, our our our, our hope is that we uh, is that we continue the story past these first forty eight. Uh, so you know, a lot of people wonder about the structure of this of the show and the the actual format, the way you're displaying it on the YouTube channel. You know, sort of how did how did what was your thinking that went into the way you're going to be presenting it? And I know you've kind of changed your the way you've been doing it over over time a bit, but sort of what went into that? Well, I think the first thing to remember is is although we've changed it over time, again we shot it in 29 days and pretty much had completed it and and planned it. I mean, before we started rolling it out, we knew what it was going to be in terms of of length and size, and and you know it it for us it seemed like a great way to deliver a story in, in a rearrangeable way, especially given, uh, as, as I'd love to throw it over to John, the, the playlist idea and being able to rearrange these episodes to share them in the way that you would want your friends to be hooked on the show as you have. You know, when we, when we first started talking about 
this series, um, you know, bef like ba ba I think before we even started writing the script itself, when we were still in outline phase, we were already talking about, wow, wouldn't it be great if we somehow could allow people to mix these up and watch them in the order that they want to watch them. Uh, and, uh, and that was like years before we knew that we were going to be uh, showing this on, on YouTube and that we would have all of the, the tools available to us through YouTube. In fact, it was years before many of the tools that we are using now on YouTube even existed. Yeah. Um, so we, were, we talked about it mostly in the abstract, like, wow, wouldn't it be cool? But you know, up until about a year ago, we weren't sure exactly how that was going to happen. And then as soon as you know, YouTube fell into place and we, start, and we knew that this is where we were going to be telling the story, then it was about exploring those tools. And what we found was so much of what we wanted the series to be was best served here at, at YouTube, you know? Um, and I know that people, you know, feel like the, the, the episodes are, uh, are short. Uh, you know, we've gotten a lot, a lot of complaints about, about the, the length of the episodes, and we've definitely heard. Uh, I don't want anybody to think that we, we aren't listening to them and that we, are, that we aren't taking that, you know, very seriously. But as Jason said, we, we shot this in 29 days, and we... We made it. We put we put it together. This is a, there's a big difference, at least right now, in how web content is made. And in, in you know, at least as it differs from television, is that you can't make a web series at this scale like television. In that uh, in that as the show is airing, you know, as you're watching episodes of The Walking Dead, they're creating episodes of The Walking Dead. They can adjust as they go you know it's much more difficult for us to adjust as we go and we have done some adjusting you know we, we within the first two weeks we changed our ending credits because they were frankly way too long they were end credits of you know for a studio film and we realized we had made a mistake and we made that change but that change was very difficult to do at the level that we're that we're working much easier for independent film uh, independent web creators to to make those changes much harder for us um, that said, we've always wanted this series to be small, bite-sized pieces that you could rearrange, explore, and we feel like short episodes um, will allow audiences to really explore this story world in a variety of ways, to watch it in chronological order if they want to, or watch it from the perspective of one character. Now, could we make them a bit longer? Sure, and that's a discussion that we're going to be having for sure if we go into a into another season of this series. Um, so there's going to be another season. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, what 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 I can say for sure is that we're writing a script for a second season. We we we've been uh, we've been uh, given the go ahead for that, um, and that is good news. And um, and you know uh, the series is 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 doing well, and and people are really enjoying it. So. Fingers crossed, and we will continue telling the you know the next uh, the next part of this. Yeah, I mean, I really think that the tools on YouTube are pretty good there for, to be able to watch the show in a kind of continuous way. And you guys did a really good job of cutting or, or of allowing if you're going to watch it through the playlist, you know, you're going to miss the intro, you're going to miss the credits. You're just going to go story after story after story, and you can watch. You know, you can go on a four-hour bender by the end of it if you want, right? And, and I so think I think. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I was going to say, I think part of it is, is also semantics. We actually had a discussion early on as to whether or not we called these things episodes. And mm -hmm. if there's one sort of reanalysis that I think I would look back on and, and take more seriously, <laughs> it might be using that word because, honestly, they're yeah. scenes, right? They're basically yeah. like, you Part know, segments. three to Pieces. five minute scenes and little... Pieces little, of segments. Yeah, little yeah. nuggets that were designed to be... Yeah kind of put together in a, like a choose-your-own-adventure way. You can make your quote-unquote 30-minute episode out of these, these chunks. Um, but I do think that because they're called episodes and, you know, there comes, that comes with a certain set of expectations, so I can understand why people Absolutely. are sort of, like jarred out of what they're used mm -hmm. to. Um, you know, and that's unfortunately just the way of <laughs> doing something new goes. Yeah, but, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, John, you and I were talking about this a little earlier today that, you know, we don't know what the future of television is going to look like, whether it's going to be long form stuff, whether it's going to be short form stuff, whether it's going to be this remixing, is it going to be all done in one big block, or is it going to, you know, these experiments have to be tried out, and I think it's great that you guys are are trying the experiment out, right? I mean, I say for anybody interested in creating content for the internet right now, or just creating content in general, right? The internet is such an exciting place now, right? 
because we haven't figured out, the studios haven't really figured out how, like what works, right? Like what's going to really make money. As soon as that is figured out, then that's what we will get all the time, right? We have two formats on television, half hour, an hour. That's it. That's what we get, you know? Um, but right now on the internet, we have the opportunity to get so much more. And there's this great window uh, of opportunity for creators to explore a variety of different things. And, and that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to explore something very different. And, I, you know, I think that we've said it since the beginning. I think that there are episodes, TV-like episodes in what we have created here. You just have to form them yourself. You have to, you know, rearrange them in the order that, you know, the order that feels right to you. I'm creating some of those on my own channel. Um, I, you know, I imagine at the end of, uh, of the, the run, the series, uh, you know, the H plus channel itself will create a bunch of playlists that also, you know, uh, feel like longer 40, 40 minute chunks. We're creating, you know, six part chapters that, you know, that, that, uh, that play the, you know, the last six episodes. Um, and I think that there's something really fun about empowering audiences to take the storytelling into their own hands. And, and I think it's also important to note, obviously, that, that unlike television, you know, the, the idea of marathoning episodes, you know, now obviously there's 33 episodes. So anyone coming to the, season, to the series now can start watching that from the beginning and really marathon it. Um, you know, it, it kind of is this great thing where it's, it's available to everyone still on, uh, on YouTube. So you're going to have that opportunity for, for a while, whereas before you'd have to wait for a DVD or, or Netflix something in terms of marathoning stuff and really just invest yourself in the story as much as we were able to, to produce of it, the, the 48 episodes. Uh, so this question comes from uh, No Coma Twelve on YouTube. So to the panel, what is I your know, perception? No Coma Twelve. <laughs> <laughs> What's your perception of how successful the first season has been, and what do you think it would take to get backing for a second season? And I think, you know, I'm going to post this question right back to the viewers: Is what are you willing to do? Who are you willing to tell to, uh, <laughs> to get the word <laughs> out? <laughs> right. So yeah, but what would it take? Do you think? Um. Well, um, I think that you know. I think that if the series continues to grow uh, the way that it is, right? We just we just hit 100,000 subscribers, which is super exciting. Um, if the word of mouth continues to spread, uh, I, I, we've all, we've known since the beginning of this that this was not going to be about you know a sudden viral hit. This was going to be about slow growth over time. All of these premium channels on YouTube are really about slow growth over time, and um, and what we've seen is a really nice growth for the channel um, over the past three months, which is, you know, not a very long time to, for a completely unknown brand to, to you know, be out there uh, trying to develop a, a, a sort of a name for itself. Um, and, uh, and so I'd say I'd, it would have to continue in that, in that, uh, in that way. And um, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, to be honest with you, I don't know the, the, the full answer to that. Obviously, there are so many other small factors involved in making something. I, you know, I already said we are definitely going to be writing a script. Mm -hmm. That we do know. Um, but making a project like this at this level, it, it, you know, it, there are so many little steps along the way. And every Planning. one of – what what'd you say? Planning. Planning. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot. There's a lot of steps along the way, and at, at any point, things can be derailed. And at and and at any point, like things can all of a sudden just like, okay, we're going. I mean, you know, for for years, we were in development on this. You know, from from 2008 to two to late 2010, and then all of a sudden, Stuart, it was like, all right, we're shooting this thing. It was like, uh -huh. oh, okay, let's go. We're I, we're going to Chile. Let's uh, all right. So four okay. years of development. That's you know, that's a lifetime in internet time. Yeah, <laughs> you know, from when you came up with the idea to when you when you you know when it got out to the wide release, that's amazing. But I yeah. also think that that's because it was a new idea, and and now that it's established, obviously, uh, like John's saying, or the, a new script's being written, everyone's excited about it. We want to give, you know, a, a, a next season to the fans, and there will be that taken into you know account as we progress forward and try and obviously plan it quicker. Uh, we already know a lot of the pratfalls that we we came out in the beginning in the first season, and you know we're just looking forward to to getting in there and, and creating one. Yeah, and and part of that part of those years of waiting was also I think waiting for the time to be right. I I, I don't think anybody can deny that we are really at this 
great turning point for digital media, for internet media, you know, the, the, with the, the YouTube uh, partner initiative and all of the new technologies that we're seeing um, for media. Uh, this really is the right time. And, you know, we, I, I'd, I'd say if, like, Cosimo and I had had it our way, like, you know, we would have had this thing made years ago, and it may have not really had a place a couple of years ago. So I feel like everything sort of worked out the way it did, but during those, those many years of development, we were building a very, very, very big world. So it's true. Now we have so much of it, and um, yeah, I think that things would, would go a lot faster um, this time around. Uh, so this question comes from uh, Mike uh, 081283. Uh, any chance of an H-plus video game? <laughs> I've heard this question a couple of times. Uh, I mean, I, I would love it. Uh, me too. I'd love to have one. I think, I, I think it's a sublime demand ideal. We, we would love to, uh, we'd love to do it. It's just, I, uh, think, I think the reason why, uh, why the series speaks to people in that way is that the series itself already has a bit of a gaming component to it, right? Like, there is something about the series that, that, uh, that asks audiences to get involved, to be active, to interact with the series the way that you would sort of interact with, with a video game. And, and because it's got, you know, some big story world and where, you know, POV, we're... The, I think the POVs, are, it's a good time the to... The POVs, yeah. All of, I think all of that stuff. And, and we're really influenced by, uh, by video games. I mean, I'm a huge video game buff. I mean, I, I, and in particular, I love video games that have massive worlds like Skyrim, Fallout, and, and whatnot. So I could definitely see a video game out of this uh, out of this project. But it's true. It's what you said. It's a supply and demand thing, I think. Yeah. Uh, so another question. This comes from Sam Henry. Um, uh, so where do you think the next step is with the new script going, time, another event? So, you know, you've already sort of, you know how all of these events are going to unfold? Is there like another whole big chapter to this, the future of humanity post-virus? Uh, you don't well, want to spoil it? I don't want to spoil anything, but I mean, I guess no. it would it be spoiling if I said yes. I mean, like, you know, this story is, uh, that's kind of the exciting thing about telling a story across a massive timeline like this, is that, like, here's a, here's a, a great way to put it, right? There are a couple of actors who, uh, who during the, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to, I don't know if it's, what, yeah, right, Big okay, yeah, we, we have, we've, seen, we've seen somebody already die, right? And there's a, there's, you know, obviously the actors wonder, like, you know, are you going to bring me back if we, we come back? But my character died, so how would you ever bring me back? And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, your character, we all die at some point, yep. right? Yeah. So your, your character's alive at some point on this timeline. And, um, and that's something really exciting is that we can tell this story from a variety of places. A lot of this discussion about whether this series is a post-apocalyptic series um, really is because we, our entry point into the story is this post-apocalyptic event. But that's not really what this story is about. That's just an event in the history of these people. Just like the Black Plague was a, an event in the history of humanity. What's really exciting is the idea that there is more to the story well past that event. And, uh, and, and we, we imagine that there are stories that take place um, that are directly or indirectly related to all of these characters decades past what, what you will see at the very end of this series. Uh, so I, we're running out of time. Uh, another like we're about seven o'clock. I'm not sure how how's, how's everyone's time. Can you stick around for another couple oh, of questions? Oh, I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, so uh, technology bad or good? Techno <laughs> technology bad or good? Yeah. yeah. I mean, good. Or or you know more specifically, I mean, I think yeah. what you know one of the big issues that you're dealing with with the story is this concept of tra transhumanism, right? This, right. This future merging of humans and machines. Uh, which we're moving ever closer to right now with our iPhones and our, you know, our future implants. Um, you know, where do you guys stand? You know, what sort of story are you telling about this? Well, I guess the, the like, it, it's like asking, is nuclear energy bad? 
right? Like nuclear energy is not bad. It's not good either. It's just, it is, it just, it is what it is, right? Now the uses of nuclear energy, just like the uses for, you know, some of these new transhumanist tools can go in either direction, right? Um, and because of how powerful some of these new technologies are, it leaves us very vulnerable, right? And, and so I think that there is certainly within the realm of possibility, a scenario in which something goes wrong because things go wrong all the time. Um, but I don't necessarily think that that, that, that that is saying that technology is a bad thing or that we should, um, that we should turn our backs on technology. Um, even though we do have characters in this series that believe that, we have characters who don't believe that. Um, you know, I think that ultimately what we wanted to do was show an honest world um, of, of people sort of dealing with this technology and, and in a lot of ways mirror the world that we live in. I mean, a lot of this technology is not that much different than, than the technology we have today. It's just it's in our pockets now versus under our skin. Um, uh, so um, I, I, I kind of... This idea that we're, that we're sort of telling a cautionary tale—it's not really something that—it's not really something that was on Cosmo and, and, and my mind. I, I well. think it's—I think it's just say right. It's not technology is not that if it's bad or or, or good. Technology just is, and it all depends on the on the use that we have for it um, at the end of the day. Well, let's let's have a rubber hits the road here question. Then this this actually comes from Chrome Ghost. Uh, would you guys upgrade yourselves if you had the chance? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah definitely. For yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll get get the, I would. You'd all get I'll the. I mean, I'll the virus-free version. Yeah, I mean, I think I yeah. think what you you end up when you end up seeing in general in technology is that once it gets to a certain stage, if everyone has it and you're left out, you're left at a disadvantage. So you know, being a, an early adapter or or jumping onto something like the iPhone or whatever the newest technology is. You know, you want to be a part of it because it helps you. It, it enhances your life in some way, shape, or form. Um, and I think that H plus is the next evolution of that. You know, you're seeing it in Google Vast. You're seeing it in ways that are already becoming it. Whether it will happen in our lifetime, um, that's tough to tell. But the other advancements in, um, in, in biotech do have, have shown us that we're not far off from what could actually happen. I think that it, we will see it in our in our lifetime, and I don't think that it. I think it's inevitable. We're not. It's not. It's not like we can stop this from happening, and it's certainly not that like that. Any fears that uh, that that things could go wrong are going to slow it down in any way. Like anyone who believes that that um, that luddism or neo luddism is going to slow it down, it's just it's just not going to. That's not the way. I don't believe it's the way that progress works. Um, and uh, and so. These things, these technologies are coming. Um, when they do come, they will come at a slow enough, uh, or maybe not necessarily even a slow enough pace. They'll come at a pace that feels right to us, and we'll accept those technologies, and we'll need to accept, I think, accept some of those technologies in order to get by in the world that we live in. I know people who said for years that they would never have a cell phone. They have cell phones yeah. now, right? Or people who said, I mean, how many people did you know back in like the 90s that were like, I'll never have an email address? Could you imagine not having an email address, you know? So it's like these types of things. And we know that we live in a world today where our information, our, our privacy can be hacked, that our, our personal information can be stolen, that, um, you know, that, that GoDaddy can be taken down, right? We know that we live in a world where we are vulnerable, but we accept it. And it's just because we have gotten to a place where we, we weigh the costs versus the benefits and the benefits uh, win out considerably. And that will eventually happen. I don't think that that's a, a bad thing. I don't think it's a good thing. I just, like I said, I just think it is. It's just a, 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 a reality. And I think sort of jumping back to the how do you use this in the classroom kind of question, if we have done something that gets people to have this conversation that we're having right now, I think we'd all be super, super excited by that. You know, yeah. it's like, I think if you, if you looked at technology 10 years from now, right now, it would look super sci-fi and crazy. Like, if somebody had shown me an iPhone 10 years before the iPhone came out, I would have just laughed. Like, I would have yeah. just flat out rejected that that piece of technology could exist. It, they happen so sort of um, silently and, and um, sort of at a pace that we're all used to that I don't think you notice 
technology sort of investing itself into your life um, as much as you really, as, as much as it is. So I think like this conversation, we're not anti-technology, we're not necessarily pro-technology. I just think having this conversation sort of like stepping back and being amazed by what this, you know, sort of period in time is all about is one of our one of our I think, goals. I think if anything, we're sort of pro-human, right? Like pro-humanism, yeah. right? Humans created this technology, and and I think that if anything, the series, right? It's called H plus. It's which uh, we know is the symbol for transhumanism, and we know that transhumanism is about bettering the human condition. If anything, I think that this show is less about the technology, less about the technology behind transhumanism, and it's more about that human condition, exploring what that human condition is. Because if we don't really understand that, then bettering it, what does that even mean, right? Um, oh, man. Do we have any? I just want to uh, say that whoever mentioned that this is sort of like Mist, I'm super excited by that comment because I grew <laughs> up on that game. Yeah, I, I, I love me some Mist as well. I think they come up with a new version of that. Um, or a movie. Are you guys are you guys looking at comments here? I can't see. Yeah, yeah, I've they're been, running YouTube. I've been trying to get something yeah. to go up by so fast. Yeah, they well, go by pretty fast. Yeah, yeah, I, that's uh, why I'm I'm looking distracted from time to time because I'm trying to. Uh, I mean, I mean, I, I saw one that uh, I'll jump in, and that was how WB got involved uh, and and the funding of of such an ambitious project. Um, you know, I, I think that you know we all we all saw when when John and Cosmo took it to Warner Brothers. And they brought us on board. We knew we had something special, and 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 wanted to do it in this you know new way, and really kind of present it. And they kind of pulled out all the stops for for a web series, um, really taking it to a new level and what could be achieved on the web. Um, and really was you know the best support possible. When when you talk about how much it was for our our four hours of content. Um, it, it can best be described as a as a small independent feature, uh, and uh, that's uh, that's kind of where it where it sits. And we're just like I said, looking forward to the next next shoot. I feel but I feel bad there. I, I think that there are some people who asked questions yesterday, and I feel like because we answered so many down below that some of those folks didn't get to uh, to have their their questions answered. Um, is there a way to to see some of the ones from? Don't have the ones from yesterday. I'm grabbing the uh, ones from the event from YouTube. YouTube is the the main place where they're coming in, but uh, oh, they are. Okay. Yeah, yeah. NFS Cross 2010 shout out. <laughs> There's your what, shout out. What is it? What? There's just a shout out request from NFS Cross 2010. Just so people know, this is just a shout totally out. live. Yeah. Um, uh. Oh, wait, somebody okay, wants so this... to know if there's any in, any instructions available for building the the uh, the prop glass notebooks. Stuart, you want to take that? I one? want one of those. Yeah. I love that everything in the future is clear and uh, totally impractical to actually use in like any sort of lit environment. But it looks awesome, <laughs> and we're just as guilty. Like every movie does that, and we're like completely uh, fell into that trap. And uh, you know, that thing doesn't make a lick of sense in the real world, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you try using it? Did it work very well? Well, it's just a piece of plexiglass. It's yeah. like all the effects, all the overlay. Yeah, you can easily make those by getting some plexiglass <laughs> and then a visual effects department to, yeah. uh, to, to <laughs> right to help they're, you. Out. They're, they're they're very easy. Um, this one here, uh, can we have an exact date and time for the event? Um, I'm not gonna get. I'm not gonna give that here, but. It's in the series. Like you can use some information that is in the series. There is there is a date hidden somewhere in the series. Some have found it already, and you can you can use that to guesstimate where where uh, where the event uh, fell. We um there's, yeah we there's also a great map app that uh, you know I, I think if a lot of people don't see you know that, that kind of gives you the scrolling ability to see when the episodes fall as well to help that uh, that guesstimating. Yes. Uh, so this this is a question I I really liked. Um, this comes from Yendization. Uh, the whole series is quite fragmented. Can we expect more interactions between the characters in the second season? 
and would that lead to a gradual shift to, to something more like a like a movie finisher? So, you know, these interactions uh, uh, is there going to be more interactions between these characters? I, mean, I think we're starting to see some overlap. Yes. With some yeah, of we're the starting. To, now, we're starting right? to see. We're starting to see some overlaps. There will be more overlaps as we close in on you know the end of this this first season. Um, and uh, you know, I mean, like I said, this is going to be a big discussion going into writing uh, a season two. What I can definitely say is that. I, I mean, I, you know, I can't say for sure, but but I, I feel pretty confident that what we will not get are episodes that are closing in on the 20-minute mark. What we will probably not get are it, it are pieces that feel like TV, because I think that we are going to always want it to have this interchangeability. Um, but uh, I think that that likely they will they will be a, a bit longer of course that's going to require some degree of of compromise between how many of the episodes we actually put out we have 48 this time you know i we, we wouldn't be able to do 48 for example 10 minute episodes you just wouldn't be able to do it we don't have the the, the resources for something like that um and so i would imagine that probably with that comp compromise we'll probably see a little bit more interaction uh between the storylines uh um, because of that, and probably within the actual episodes themselves. Um, but, you know, we, we really always wanted this to have this, we really always wanted it to have this sort of fragmented uh, aspect where, where, where as, especially in the beginning, where we would have different stories taking place in different places ar around the world, almost like that if you wanted to just watch the series just from Lena and the Mumbai storyline, that that there would be um, some satisfaction that you could get about uh, spending time with those characters, getting to know those characters, their needs, their wants, without needing to, to find that other stuff out. And that, you know, delving into the Montantopi stuff would actually enhance the, 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 uh, the other stuff, but wouldn't necessarily, you wouldn't be required to, to watch the two. We, we really like that idea that, 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 you could, uh, that you could tell a story like that. But as the as the story progresses, as the season progresses, we will start to see that these characters are are interrelated because they are not the only survivors in this world. You got to remember, yeah. a lot of people. Like, yeah, I think you yeah, said I what, to add that, like, people that, died. What's that? Yeah, was that like, no? There oh, are there are a lot of people who, who survived, and we chose we chose our characters. We chose to follow. We chose to follow some stories. Also for that reason, because we know they are con connected between each other. Yeah, these characters are these characters are chosen out of the sixty six percent of people who survive exactly. this event because they're special, right? Like yeah. because you know not only do they give us sort of they give us insight in like Lena doesn't just represent every um, uh, you know lower caste lower class character after an event like this. She also is legitimately important to the actual conspiracy and mystery of, of what's going on. Cool. Well, I think, um, I think we, need to, uh, we need to wrap this up. I think we've taken a lot, enough of your time. So thank you very much to everybody who was watching tonight. And thanks to Cosimo and John and uh, Jason and uh, Stuart for for joining us, that was awesome. Thank you very much. It was great. Thanks for having us. Yeah. And if, I guess what? If people enjoy this, will you do it again? Oh yeah, for sure. sure. Yeah, I, for sure. I was thinking maybe we would do something with the actors next time. You know, where we uh, where we can uh, we can have some of the actors from the series on and and uh, and perhaps get some insight from them uh, on their characters. But uh, but yeah, cool. uh, it was super fun. Maybe uh, if people have more questions, just uh, you know. You can ask us on on Google Plus or on Facebook or on Twitter. You can ask me directly. I'm all over all three of those uh, those places. I'm all over the the uh, the web. So. And if people want to support the show, what what can they do? Watch it well, and recommend it to friends. Yeah. yeah, tweet it. Spread the uh, word. Spread the word. Yeah, spread the word. Tweet it. Um, you know, Google like Google Plus, share it. Uh, Facebook, you know, whatever. As, as many people see it as uh, you know the the. The I see the more, I guess getting back to that 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 question before the more chance that we that we have to tell more of this this story. Um, I think I think one of the big things and big differences about an internet story is obviously it's not a, a TV show that has the immense amount of press in September going forward where you can't turn and see an ad for it everywhere. 
You know, it really is a grassroots effort because we created it because we love the story and, and really just hope other people do. And uh, John, I, the last comment that I just was seeing was about subtitles. I thought the English subtitles were available now. English subtitles are available. They are available okay. on every episode. They're there. Um, it, you know, subtitles in other languages, we have currently Spanish and English. Um, those are the only subtitles we have. However, if you have it, if you're, you know, watching it with the English subtitles, all you have to do is switch it to uh, any other language using the, the Google Translate beta feature. It's not going to be exact. It'll probably be a little bit more literal, but, um, but you'll get enough of the context, I think, to, to enjoy the episodes that way as well. So, no, they, they, they've, got, they've got English subtitles. Cool. We're good. All right. That good. Was so, share, so get the word out. Share it to your friends and uh, try and get the uh, get more and more people watching the show and then that'll support these kinds of experiments and this kind of stuff and and uh, and help everyone do a season 2 so yes. all right well thanks everybody for watching thanks to uh, to all of the team for joining in the hangout it was great Thank you. and thanks for letting me uh, moderate it so i really appreciate Thank it you, Fraser. all right awesome. we'll Thank see you guys all later amazing dude thanks later guys bye bye bye